Welcome back to Take a Sip Podcast. I'm Tito. And I'm Leche. And what are you sipping on this week, Leche? I am. I didn't have much in the fridge <laughs> this week, to be honest. Um, I just had a nice cold Bud Light with me. Can't, not a bottle, sadly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sadly. What are you drinking then? And I'm just drinking some Moscato. Moscato? Oh, Continuing shit. the wine vibe from last week. <laughs> wine enthusiast here. <laughs> trying to get more into it i think it would be better than just straight up beer 85 percent of the time i know i agree yeah definitely (laughs) um and just a little disclaimer at the beginning of this episode if there are weird cuts or moments where we just completely forget what we're talking about um it's just because we're dealing with personal stuff even like at the moment of recording this so stuff might be interrupting us in and out yeah. so if we, it sometimes sounds like we lose complete thought of a conversation it's probably because we had to pause <laughs> walk away and then come back and we might repeat ourselves so yeah just a quick disclaimer but we'll yeah. try to get through this as smoothly as possible mm-hmm. i mean and really the well, it's one big thing divided into multiple smaller uh, topics for us this week. Yeah. Literally, it was earlier today of recording this on uh, the 10th of June on a Thursday was the Summer Game Fest presented mm-hmm. by Amazon Prime. Not surprised, you know, they got the big money to support something like that. <laughs> well. Sure. Well, yeah, exactly. And especially right now, like if um, Amazon Prime with with Twitch, I mean, there's a lot of Prime subscribers on Twitch right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I had one free Twitch subscription, which I already used. Um, (laughs) Not going to say who, (laughs) but (laughs) I feel like I get a lot of them, dude. I'm always in and out of. chat rooms in twitch for sure oh, if, really? it's not, if it's not destiny people it's like you know bigger people mm-hmm. you know like ludwig and all those dudes and stuff like that the bigger streamers i'm always like in and out you know of their yeah. shit so i'm always having little fun emotes that you know i like to pop here and there for sure yeah for sure <laughs> and um so summer game fest is exactly what it sounds like a yeah. festival <laughs> With multiple games coming up with uh, sneak peeks or previews or first mm-hmm. time trailers or just slightly more information on games that were already presented a couple weeks or months back. Oh, yeah. It's like the pre E3. It's like a little sneak peek to E3. Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I like to see it. No, for sure. For sure. And I mean, we still have E3 coming up. I know there's besides e3 a lot of other companies like we mentioned before are planning their own like sony. Uh, like sony their own presentations and the same way like apple has their yearly presentation type of thing so mm-hmm. slowly we might be getting more news more information on what's going on on like what we said games that everybody's excited for what is gonna happen with this lack of consoles so they hopefully might touch base on those during their presentations <laughs> quote unquote hopefully <laughs> hopefully exactly it's one Debatable. big one big hope well um, i like i mean looking at the lineup from the the summer game fest you know mm-hmm. like the event itself just the the stream that they had today i felt like there was a lot of indie games i don't know like a lot of like n- lower not not so knowing games Mm-hmm. Which is pretty exciting for the people who actually, you know, love indie games, like to discover new games. I mean, there's a lot like they, they had a, a excuse me saying it like this, but a shit ton of games they showed off. Oh, 100%. like over 25 games. Yeah, it was ridiculous. I think there was less talking and more trailers. Oh, like, th- anything yes. else in the entire stream. And that is, fantastic. that is completely what I enjoyed about it. Well, I mean, exactly. I just skimmed through it after after it was shown or whatever. But mm-hmm. 
yeah, from the little bits, I mean, from the bits and pieces that I was skipping, I was sometimes just skipping like five seconds before the next trailer was already up. Like for me, that's what I enjoy. Like cut the bullshit. Yeah. Introduce it. Or if a developer wants to talk a little bit about, about it, especially right now, coming out of this pandemic well not coming out of but hopefully reaching the end of it like how like the struggles and all that stuff that they were going through Mm -hmm. so i mean if we just want to like cut right into it the main first big thing that they talked about well that they presented um if you are a big fan of borderlands um it's not another Borderlands, but it's almost like a spinoff of it with a lot of still the same. Yeah, it's a spinoff game. Yeah, it's a, it's its own standalone game um, with, I think, some characters that might be making the crossover, a lot of the same art style, but there is some new advances. Um, so the game is called uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. If I'm, yeah, I know it's Wonderlands. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's Tiny Wonderland. Tina, right? Yeah, Tiny Tina's, yeah. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. And I mean, like I said, it's a lot of the same graphics, probably like the updates that we're getting with, with the new engines and stuff. Um, but there is some things as like um, new weapons. Um, you can now be doing some spell casting apparently in the game. Which was also shown in the trailer, like he yeah, was using was. a gun and then with his other hand, some amplification type of spell that he I mean, used. It's Borderlands, you know, like it's just meant to get wild and crazy, you know. So, I mean, that's to be an ex- to be expected in that game, to be honest. Yeah, and even some something you couldn't do before is now a little bit more uh, character customizations oh. as mm-hmm. well. And I mean, in the trailer, the two names that stuck out to me as voice actors that might be for for the game was Andy Samberg and Wanda Sykes <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. for like a Borderlands type of game. It's just oh my god, they probably so have so much there. fun, dude. Just talking, dude. Oh my god, especially Andy Samberg's dude. Holy crap! <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. And I mean, the release date or possible release date uh, was set to early 2022. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, what what are your thoughts? Like, what are you on it? I mean, yeah, it's I mean, it's a it's a freaking Borderlands game, pretty much. It's just it's centered around one of their most famous characters, or if anything, <laughs> the most famous character yeah. of. All freaking, you know, Borderlands. So it's of course it's pretty exciting. It's more Borderlands for the people who actually love that franchise and the art style. I mean, that I think that's the biggest pull away for that game's like franchise. Pretty much is just the art style is amazing. You know, yeah, it's pretty neat. So yeah, and speaking about like lovable franchises and the face to to a franchise, pretty much. Um, after that, we had the one and only Jeff Goldblum uh, talking a little bit about the developments of the new game for Jurassic World, which is set to come out in the late in the end of 2021. Like most likely holiday, you know, but that's hopefully. that's pretty cool, man. They made they, <laughs> you know, I just you know, he's such a funny dude. Honestly, dude, he's Jeff so Goldblum. funny. He's yeah. done. He's done so much. I mean. Obviously, Jurassic Park was what it not I mean, he started put him, Jurassic, yeah. not put him like it didn't start his career, but it made him more notice noticed in the acting world. Um, so much so that I know he's been like a host on RuPaul's Drag Race. He's been like just quick appearances, almost like a Stanley type of thing, and like other movies to like make references to like a joke or whatever about I mean, Jurassic I think- World. I think he gave like thanks to Jurassic Park in general, especially mm-hmm. like the first two that he, those are the old, those are the two he came out like primarily. Mm-hmm. But he he thinks that like Jurassic Park the entire like series 
because it literally like you like kickstarted like you said like his fame a little bit like mm-hmm. it pushed him up there and then yeah. you know having him in um jurassic uh jurassic world 2 like the second one um i think blew him up even more because everyone's like oh my god you know like my parents are like oh it's a viejito he, like he was from the first one you know <laughs> he was just like oh shit they're like yo they just loved it even more a little bit because they like oh they recognize you know someone from the franchise yeah you know, like like the know, original in it so they're like oh shit yeah especially my dad because he loves those series with me dude Bro. yeah <laughs> which i mean the game looks pretty clean i knew they were gonna do- go a little bit more on the cartoonish side oh. of mm-hmm. doing like a dinosaur type of game for jurassic world they had to keep it pg a little bit <laughs> mm-hmm but even still, like just the beginning intro of it did seem like they were doing or we were hitting notes back from Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully it might be like the storyline, a quick like developing forward from Jurassic Park one to two to world yeah, to maybe world we two. get to be, you know, play inside the park and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Interact with the dinosaurs a little bit. Mm-hmm. Who knows? I know. Well, yes. circling back from there, I want to talk about quickly about Death Stranding. Like they're um, they it's kind of strange. I know they a lot of people will probably get the reference. Like if you guys saw the trailer or the tidbit that they did for uh, Death Stranding, and so a lot of people know that the director for that game is you know Kojima, mm-hmm. um, and he's the guy who did who pretty much made the story of uh, Metal Gear Solid. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows that main character, Snake. Tito, I'm pretty sure you've seen seen Snake, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, He's the guy that hides, like, underneath the boxes. (laughs) Like that to sneak around. Uh, So they kind (laughs) of... He's a... I say that he's a little cheeky fucker when he came to that. Because he technically, at a legal standpoint, he doesn't own the franchise anymore. Um, But he... um, in that trailer, uh, he literally made the the main guy from Death Stranding empty out a box uh, and then freaking put himself in it to see if he fits in there because he was trying to like cross like cross them over those enemies to mm-hmm. see if he could sneak by like on, uh, in a, inside a box. Literally, how Snake does. So it was a little no like, to the past. Yeah, like... no to that pretty much. So I was like, everyone was so happy about it. It, like it was funny it was funny it, it, yeah. that was literally it to the entire trailer just yeah. him trying to fit into the box while deciding whether to go through events or camouflage with the box, with the box. <laughs> that was, it was just funny dude everyone i know that made me laugh i was like oh no way dude that they actually did that yeah like, yo, like... <laughs> that, well, that's... but death stranding this game i mean a lot of people you know, have mixed opinions about the game itself, but uh, Kojima thinks it's, you know, a masterpiece in his eyes. Um, Mm -hmm. That's why he's taking another shot at it pretty much and coming out with the uh, director's cut of that game. And Mm -hmm. it's coming out soon. Who knows what that really means, you know? Yeah, especially Um, still, like he just said, like they were just barely starting the vaccines um, over where he is right now overseas. mm -hmm. So hopefully, depending on when he gets it and his team or whatever, um, it might be sooner than later. But again, only time would really tell because as we've seen with a lot of these games, they set up dates, stuff doesn't exactly go as planned, things have Mm -hmm. to get moved back, or if we're lucky, they get jumped forward, but very rarely does that ever really happen. Um, which is why I think he's trying to keep it very vague and open to when it's actually going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's definitely exciting news if you're a big fan of like the of Snake and and that that franchise. Yeah, it's just a little, you know, homage to that. Mm-hmm. You know, talking about exciting, dude. Uh, the next thing that I think that caught, I don't know, it caught my attention for sure after that was, of course, the Call of Duty season four like announcement of course that's huge that comes mm-hmm. out from today's date uh january 6th i mean sorry june 10th yeah <laughs> uh it should be coming out june 17th so directly a week from today 
is going to be a big, you know, it's a big thing, you know, new zo- new zombie map, most likely an outbreak map, new PvP guns. maps. Yeah, is like, it's going to be crazy. New operators, new guns, of course. Mm-hmm. So that's, it, that's pretty exciting, dude. Especially for people who love Call of Duty. <laughs> oh, yeah. And even so, like, they're, like, um, they're bringing back old maps from, like, I mean, the beloved hijacked oh, uh, yeah. yacht map that a lot of people normally play on, especially to play gun game on that map. Yeah, yeah so that was the fun. funnest map to play gun game for sure, dude. So oh, definitely yeah. seeing that map pop up again in like 6v6 matches, or like I said, gun game matches. I'm um, going to hit some nostalgia points. I mean, I normally everybody's like, oh, Nuketown, Nuketown, but it's such a small map. Um, even though hijack is literally just a yacht, I feel like there is so much more to do on the yacht than there is in Nuketown. Yeah, I think it's because of the whole like there's a bottom to it as well. Yeah, like that makes it a little bit slightly bigger in the sense. Yeah, and slightly because bigger think, high points as well. Yeah, like the high points where you're on mm-hmm. top of the two, the two towers of the yacht. Yeah. Um. I think that's probably the third smallest map. I, I don't know what the second is, but Nuketown is for sure probably the smallest map. Yeah. Still. Yeah. Like in Call of Duty history. So. And then, Man. like we said, that yeah, that was season four for that. Um, and speaking of matches and literally just doing a whole bunch of stuff for it, I mean... <laughs> the beloved Among Us game. Among Us, yes. Got mentioned in the summer summer game fest. That's funny, dude. That, that was on a little like, unexpected, to be honest. Like, it oh was. shit. Yeah. So normally Among Us was just the regular basic colors that everybody played, the basic customizations. And then outside of the game was where you could get or hire people for mods to do in the game. Mm -hmm. so now with the summer game fest it actually got announced that a lot of that stuff is actually going to be put into the the game officially so there will be besides the new maps and the new tasks that everybody knows there's new colors that are going to get added Mm -hmm. that i mean a lot of them actually look like really nice colors like the tan one the tan beige colored one like looked actually yeah yeah, that looked pretty nice (laughs) I and think I saw like, like rose and like some other color. I think I one like, of them was called mauve. Mauve, yeah. It was like something a purple, like that. red, plum yeah. type of color. I'm like, I never heard of that color. <laughs> but okay, dude, hell yeah. Um, <laughs> they should just add a color wheel, dude, honestly. <laughs> it just, you know, just circle. Oh, what color do you want? I want color UF 303 XJ 105. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude. Hey, I mean, it's more diverse, you know. But you say blue, are you going navy blue or aqua blue? No, I'm going Bud Light blue, sapphire blue. (laughs) I'm going sapphire blue right here. (laughs) So, yes, like the colors, uh, more costume options, um, the famous, uh, like. I, I saw uh, they were like bringing in like the crow mask back and the delirious hockey mask. Yeah, um, like they're bringing all those like, all those things back, dude. I mean, like all those modded shit that people had, literally in adding it to the base game, which is awesome. You know, yeah, new modes, new roles. So yeah. instead of just being the, they're the, they're, they're adding hide and seek, dude. That's already huge in my hide opinion. and seek. That's yeah, so that's gonna be awesome. I want to know how that works. I like how they put the the white one the white uh, little alien character with like the snowman at the bottom of the map of like the original yeah. map. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we haven't played in a while. If this is coming to the base game, I'm willing to go back just to try it out. New oh, modes. for sure. Dude. Hell yeah. I definitely would love to try those new modes on. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, even a quick little teaser trailer that they even showed off in the fest um the the announcer literally said it it is something new and big but it's also in a very 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 quick trailer seconds i think i know where you're going with this one yeah Yeah, was uh for valorant 
yeah with a <laughs> little teaser to a new hero character person teaser, dude. it's like yo what that's like i, I don't want to put it in the, i wanted to say it in a funny way dude but no, i'm not gonna say it yeah it, it, yeah, it wasn't a <laughs> teaser it was literally just a tease just barely the tip <laughs> going tease, barely the fucking nipple dude <laughs> <laughs> Like um, holy crap, dude! It's if like that was you, any quicker, I would die. It's like when you could just barely see the nipple through the shirt, <laughs> like that. Literally. That that was the tease. That was fucking <laughs> tease. <laughs> um, and I mean, really, that all that they showed was like a slight robotic suit, and then the helmet slash head. Yeah, that's to the new it. character. That's literally it. And they said like, "Oh, you must know who that is." Like, no, I don't. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay then. <laughs> Fuck I us mean, then. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's cool to see that they're at least announcing another character. The last one I think was the shadow, the shadow weird demon dude that like yeah. looked into like invisible and teleport. Yeah, I don't know the names. Of the I don't know names either. Man. Oh mm-hmm. man, I just know how they look though. Exactly. That's all I know. <laughs> all I know. I feel bad. I should probably know more about that game because it's an awesome game for sure. But damn. yeah. I'm talking it's... about awesome shit, dude. Again, another tidbit that's like small, <laughs> but like people actually love the game is Escape from Damn it, dude. You gotta have a name. Huh? <laughs> Escape from Tur Tatar Tarko Tarvo. Tarkov. Escape Tarkov. From Tarkov. What the fuck? Dude, I can't say I'm illiterate like, as fuck. I was like, what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the only reason why I'm talking about this is because I do have a few friends that actually play that game. And they say it's fantastic, it's pretty realistic, but at the same time, it's kind of slow paced. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, even seeing it, like them playing it, like it's pretty slow, like it's slow paced, but it's very strategic compared to other games, though. Mm-hmm. But it's it's pretty cool what they're adding. They're literally adding like an entire new section of the map. So it's like new, probably with that comes with like new, new guns, probably new outfits for like your characters to go search for and stuff like that. So that's pretty exciting for those people who actually love that type of game. So it's like a really realistic, strategic your shooter, first person shooter game. So, hmm. and then continuing off of that, the next one, two things in one that I'm excited for. Uh-huh, I know this is literally two things of your shit. Two, I know <laughs> one that I constantly keep bothering Lich about, but he literally out of spite, he just won't watch it at this I point. <laughs> not watch it, baby. So Smite uh, came out with it's a very weird crossover. I'm not gonna lie to you a little bit. I, I mean, mean, they oh, added the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I was gonna say they added Ninja the Ninja Turtles. Turtles in Aang. So I'm like, yeah. okay, dude. Yeah, yeah, you so, can add whatever the fuck <laughs> you want at this point. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so Smite is going into its ninth year of being released. Um, and they announced that they are doing a crossover collaboration with Stranger Things. Uh, like I mentioned a few weeks back, Stranger Things already announced that it is coming out with season four. Four? Season four. Four. Um And so in the collaboration that they're doing, we are now going to get two heroes and two villains. Um, Obviously, the main villain is going to be the Demigorgon, the pretty much main known beast, the original beast of the series. Flat monster, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so the demigorgon will be the skin for the god bakasura oh so they're skins i thought they were their, like a playable character no well oh. it, no it's what it's what every collaboration has always been all the teenage the the turtles and even all the ink characters they're all just skins for the basic gods because none of these characters are gods if there were gods within the show they might become Uh, like a playable character but these are all just skins which obviously like the it's gonna change the abilities yeah Um, okay so it does change like stuff like that okay that's what i was a little bit confused about yeah no like as we saw for like ang ang was able to change his ability his abilities from air to fire to earth i don't remember much about the water being one but um 
So yeah, the demigorgon will be the Bakasura. Bakasura. Eleven, our official main hero, pretty much of the series, is gonna be uh, the skin for Sila. Our second villain is going to be the Mind Flare, what's been the main thing the past two seasons, pretty much, is going to be the, the skin for Sylvanas. And then Hopper, which was the most unexpected one <laughs> that I, I just didn't know how they were going to add another hero, but they brought in Hopper. And it makes sense who they made him play. So uh, Hopper is going to be the skin for Apollo. So oh, okay. Apollo, Apollo in Greek mythology is the god of the sun. He has a twin sister, the goddess of the moon. And these twins are known to be archers. So obviously instead of, instead of bows and arrows, he's going to be just shooting guns <laughs> well, listen, listen, gun. <laughs> yeah and then uh awesome. eleven and hopper apparently are gonna have alternative skins as well like yeah like alternative skins like obviously you're gonna have basic eleven with her psychic abilities and then i believe sila has a mode where she could like levitate and like fly around a little bit so that's obviously gonna be hers and the same thing with apollo and hopper so two different skins i want to say i think one of them they were called like prestige or uh lineage skins or whatever so i didn't catch the names to be honest yeah, yeah. <laughs> looking yeah, through it yeah. i was just amazed i'm like oh they actually add in this yeah well I, I really haven't played any of these characters much so smite is definitely something i hopefully get back into i mean i was a poseidon main <laughs> for the most of it <laughs> um um, yeah, I know. Weird. Me, Poseidon, God of the Sea, a freaking trident. It's weird. I know. Yeah. Poseidon uh, <laughs> for sure. Um, Out of the blue. He's a mage too in the game. So, yeah, I definitely need to expand my god. Yeah, diversify, <laughs> dude, for sure. Diversify. They, they have Mayan gods, like Guatemalan ancestry Mayan gods. So. I know I definitely tried playing some of those. I was like, let me let me hit the heritage a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there was that. I mean, that's super exciting. I mean, I expressed how exciting it was for the Aang and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, <laughs> so that would get me hyped. Happened. I was like, so, oh shit, dude. to now have uh, Stranger Things an incredible TV show, <laughs> and hopefully this even brings in new players. Maybe that, that it's like follow Stranger Things because I know Stranger Things is such like almost its own weird show a, in a way, a like its own fan base. To be yeah. honest, yeah, it caught it caught like the you know how do I put it? It almost had the same treatment as like social media. Mm -hmm. It like literally blew up like crazy at a moment, and yeah. it kind of goes up and down, you know, and when it comes to it, yeah. Moving on from that, um, and the next thing that, like, I mean, it caught my attention a little bit, which I, I kind of find it funny, is that Rocket League and Fast <laughs> 9 crossover. Uh, Fast I mean, Fast it makes Fury. sense. Yeah, Fast and Furious. I mean, it makes sense, but, I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just like, why? But okay. It was, it was slightly like, There's nothing wrong with it, but okay, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, there's games for everybody in this world. So definitely Rocket League. You're playing soccer as miniature toy cars. So to have that crossover of Fast and Furious just practically seem like the logical next step. Yeah, like it happen. makes sense. Like I'm not mad. It's just it's funny, you know, like you know, like a big ass franchise like that, especially like an action y, you know, it doesn't Movie. At, <laughs> at this point, it's not even about the cars, you know, like it just it doesn't it doesn't click to me a little bit <laughs> at this point. You know, maybe if you did this like when Tokyo Drift came out, it made more sense. <laughs> but like after that, you know, it kind of shifted away from that a little bit. But is Rocket League old enough to be to have that collaboration with Tokyo Drift? No, right? Maybe. No, I don't think so. No, I don't. Because so. Tokyo Drift was like when we were in high school. 
Um, so to have like no, I don't think it was. I think Rocket League came out like in 2014. Yeah, that Something yeah. Like that. Yeah, so yeah, Tokyo Drift was like when I was still in middle school or high school, and then Rocket League was like after I graduated. So mm-hmm. the next one would have been like Furious Five. Five, I think. You not skipping four entirely. <laughs> like literally Probably, five or six. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I think that was just funny, dude. Yeah. So. Following from Rocket League, I mean, the next one that I was extremely fanatic about, and I know it has so much hype right now. Of course. Um, so if you know Dark Picture Anthology, uh, their video game developers, they had three games in the past that were incredibly awesome. Um, but the one that made them go to the mainstream was their first one until dawn until dawn was not their first one yes it was oh shit you're right actually yeah (laughs) correction it was i'm looking at it now i'm like oh shit never mind i was reading this wrong (laughs) sorry so (laughs) you can keep this in i know my research yeah i I clearly did it (laughs) i clearly did it so their first game was until dawn Followed by Man of Medan mm-hmm. when they're on the ghost ship, which reminds me of the movie Ghost Ship. Ghost ship. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> self explanatory. Yeah. It was awesome. And, though. and then they had their third one, A uh, Little Hope, which mm. I didn't fully watch it. I know yeah, I watched yeah. bits and pieces of it. Um, it was just like in a weird time frame from when it came out to personal life. I know that much. Mm-hmm. Um, this, this one looks interesting though this one definitely looks interesting even like uh, even our friend andre might be interested in this one <laughs> so what did it say like that their next game is called house of ashes um it already has the set date of release for october 22nd which is nuts dude of this year so 2021 which is crazy yeah yeah and they did do a little bit of a monster reveal at the end of the trailer, which the monster looks pretty freaking cool. Like a bat. <laughs> like it, a bat. Yeah, it's like a cool bat vampire. You know what the like the vibe gave me of that like trailer, dude? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen the movie. Um, damn it. Tomb Raider. The Descent. <gasps> I love that movie, dude. You, so, you have... know where the lady, the girls get stuck yes. when they go rock climbing? Yeah. yeah. It reminded me of that. It gave me that type of vibe. Yes. I'm like, holy shit, dude. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> um, I love that movie, bro. And I've seen the two different endings where she supposedly mm-hmm. escapes and it mm-hmm. ends with her on the street. Mm-hmm. And then the second one when she's just wakes falls up, asleep she's and she wakes up still in the cave surrounded by the creature. Oh, it's so good. And I know they had a follow-up movie of yeah. The Descent, which I guess... Also the, had two endings. <laughs> which also had two endings, but I know that one was, like, a little weird because the final... Uh, the uh, the last girl, the Asian girl that, um, that fought in the, first one. in the first one, like, at the end of the movie, I guess she was still able to survive some way, somehow, to warn time. the girls in the second yeah, movie I, it was just yeah logically it kind of didn't make sense but I mean, they did explain it in a movie but i was just still like eh, i mean okay yeah <laughs> yeah but it was still you know it didn't really click a little bit yeah you know? you, you know talking about the descent and 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 these types of games you know what would be a cool and very horrifying game if they were able to pull it off correctly do you remember the movie As Above, So Below? Yeah. When they go into the catacombs in France? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> a game Making like that, like that into like that? a game, bro? Dude, I mean, I feel like they already did. It's called PT. Really? Oh, no, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Honestly, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense a little bit. Yeah, it makes sense. Each level, you know, each doorway goes into further madness, pretty much, you know? <laughs> But the difference is like, oh, the concept is completely P- different. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like PT, like you're doing it alone. When you're going into catacombs, 
knowing that it's the most haunted place in the France region, and you're going in with multiple people disappearing, seeing and learning their past, like, that's yeah. horrifying. Because yeah. it's like... I mean, it would be cool. Don't get me wrong. Because yeah. it's like, you learn, like, who am I really friends with? Like, it's like a, st- like a psychological horror. Exactly. The first person. Like, I don't want there to be... M- this seems like a story based game for sure, like a driven story game. Uh-huh. Like it would be awesome. Yeah, like in concept, it does sound awesome, but man, it would be so fucking difficult to execute. <laughs> exactly. It would be super difficult to execute. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but besides that, sorry, back to House of Ashes. <laughs> the real Correct. star of this of this section of the podcast. And just when you talk about horror, you just get into it. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, House of Ashes, October 22nd. Looks beautiful already to begin with. The storyline that they touch seems pretty clear and understandable to what they're going to do. And obviously, if it sticks to the same mechanics as the first few games, it's going to be a bop. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I know <laughs> this next game, you are at least... If there's a little mini one, I'll let you take it because I don't know what you want to talk about right now. Oh, I was going to kind of like skip way down to Far Cry 6. Okay, yep. Oh, that's what you were going to go for too? Uh, I was going to go a little bit more at the end because I don't know much about Far Cry, but if you really Well, neither do I, to be honest. I don't know much about it. I was (laughs) just going to talk about it because um, me and one of our Xbox friends, uh, his name is Josh, but he's known as lasagna or garfield man you know <laughs> um but he loves this series he told me that he has all the games to it oh, and really? you know who yeah and you know who else likes this series Andre does so really? he <laughs> but that's what i'm saying oh, i yeah. wanted to get into it just to talk about like supposedly it's like, supposed to be really awesome really big m- very militarized type of game mm-hmm. but there's like you're riding tanks and all that mm-hmm. you know crap so i know a lot of people are very excited about that like the next series to that franchise for sure. Everyone was kind of upset a little bit how fifth went. Everyone loved four, completely loved four. So they're hoping this one has a little bit more to what four had, like mm-hmm. story wise, gunplay wise, and all that stuff. So that's the big, you know, tidbit for that. Yeah. Cause to be honest, like when it did say, when I did read that it was, read and hear that it was far cry uh six i was like weren't they just on four because i still remember (laughs) it's still four is still so big and so out there yeah that yeah five was like such a it wasn't a letdown it wasn't wasn't a a letdown but i mean it wasn't as big as four was exactly the expectations were high for five that four was still such that big thing the big yeah, four, factor or had too much hype to it and that, that's what crashed five a little bit yeah so. so hopefully with all these new amped up mechanics of riding tanks and being super militarized as even i know in the yeah in, but the, in the showcase stuff like that the showcase one of the voice actors to i don't know if he's the main antagonist I, yeah he is he is um yeah. I mean, he had a lot of good things to say about his own work that literally just the bits and pieces that he was doing, he was so like drawn into in to the storyline. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully this goes great for, for Far Cry and brings it back. And yeah, brings it back said. in line, you know, for Ubisoft. Yeah, exactly. What you got, dude? I mean... I was going to jump next into the next movie made video game. Yeah, I mean, that's um, perfect. Yeah. That's so, what I was going to think of too. <laughs> the old school zombie movie, The Evil Dead, is becoming a game. So, Evil Dead, the game, literally. Yeah, dude. Uh, um, they bring back the main actor to play a lot of the lines for obviously his character. Yeah, do they bring Ash back? <laughs> they bring Ash back. Um, you get to play as three other characters and I believe it is a four player game, four player co-op game mm-hmm. 
but they did hint to a little section where it could be almost 4v1 because yeah, you, like you get to be the monster yeah you, they said that. yeah you get to choose to be the monster so when i saw that and seeing a lot of the gameplay obviously there's much more zombies in this than a bunch of other games that we've seen but like besides the zombies it did give me dead by daylight friday the yeah. 13th and even like how it, the, the aesthetic of it right the gameplay yeah that's what i was thinking too i'm like is this a, when i first saw it i thought i'm like oh maybe it's a crossover with you know dead by daylight mm-hmm. i mean sorry yeah dead by daylight and evil dead i'm like oh that would be awesome but then mm-hmm. i saw it's literally just evil dead the game the i was game. like what that's interesting you know Yeah, because it even gives me like friday the 13th vibes because you yeah. still have to find artifacts and find pages from the uh, what is it the grimoire in, yeah. the, in the book I, I don't know what it's called i, I forget forgot what it's called but from, what from, it's called too. <laughs> from the it's main been a while book. since i've seen the movie too yeah so excuse <laughs> exactly. us you know honestly it also I think the last me... time i saw that movie was literally like two years ago so yeah. oh, sorry about that it even gave me vibes to do you remember the game well remember it's still out there somewhat uh last year the students in the high school fighting the oh. ghost killer. Mm-hmm. It yep. kind of gave me those vibes as well. Yeah, 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 so yeah, for sure. being able to like, I don't know how much different types of weapons they might have because some of them seem to just have standard their basic what their basic standard weapons. Yeah, like a shotgun or a pistol, and then like Mr. Bruce Campbell himself, Ash, has the chainsaw. His chainsaw yeah. hand. <laughs> yeah. So, or the um, medieval dude has his sword. Well, first, from what I was seeing, it was just like a little battle axe at first. Yeah. So I don't know if you get to upgrade to a sword later on, but it might have some drawbacks if it's like a two hand, two handed weapon. You get me? So I don't know. That that's the cool part. Like, are we going to be able to upgrade from these minor weapons to something larger, or is this all we have and find stuff to help us along in in the world, in the vast world, in the maps? Um, because it does seem a little, even with the player being able to choose the main evil ghost spirit thing, it seemed a little like that seemed like it might be a little hard to do with all the zombies that we see in the game already. Like, like right now, Dead by Daylight is only getting some zombies planted into the maps. You get me? So you really only so dealing with it. one. Yeah. So dealing with like from what we were seeing three four even sometimes five zombies at a time like mm-hmm. seemed a little hectic so i really am interested to see on how the how gameplay game i feel like it's gonna be work. one of those low-key good games you know like dead by daylight mm-hmm. i feel like it's gonna be like that it's not gonna blow up majorly but it's mm-hmm. gonna do well for itself and i do hope it does because dude to be honest i like kind of love that franchise that franchise mm-hmm. is pretty fu- one it's funny and it's pretty freaking good the yeah. remake it took itself a little too serious, but at the same time, it was still good. It was a good yeah. horror movie, for sure. No, yeah, and, and like we said, I mean, we listed off like three, practically four different games that had just about the same similar mechanics. So if they were able to learn from these games and implement them into theirs and update mm-hmm. them and make them better, make them I, ho- I hope it becomes great because even like, mm-hmm. Friday the 13th, it's such a small game. Like, I get it. It's like a horror. You play it occasionally. You could play it on Halloween just for, like, the video for YouTube like they do. But it's still being played. Like, it still has its good round of it has players. Merit. Yeah. You know, it has its merit, dude. Literally. It's one of those games. It's a, it's a game that's always going to be there, you know, type of game. Exactly. So it's like, no matter what, you're going to have fun because it's literally, it has that one principle for it, pretty much, you know. So yeah. good for it. Hopefully it does well. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, do you want to close it out? Yeah, I'll close it out finish? with the last game. Um that I the, just I, I don't know if you want to go for that last game now, right? Or I mean, you know, screw it, I'll hit it up real quick. <laughs> so the last game that I saw a peak interest in was the the Elden Ring game yeah. reveal for it. So I mean, this gave me Two types of vibes, right? Because if it's an RPG esque game, then it's Skyrim. If it's not that, then it's you know Dark Souls, like you know. But it definitely gives one of gives the vibe for those games. Essentially, it looks you know medieval, very dark esque, you know, very dark toned kind of game. 
and hopefully it's like that because it does look good and definitely a game I definitely want to you know go into and see. So yeah, like you mentioned, I saw a very Dark Souls Bloodborne esque type of game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that was like the immediate connection I made to yeah. to it, and I mean, yeah, the enemies and the the enemies in the outer world look amazing and the like the outfits and the 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 magic and the weapons like looked incredible i really do hope it 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 does good because if if it is taken into account like bloodborne and and dark souls like i mentioned Mm -hmm. it should be pretty up there It, it will already have a following if other people already made that connection to mm-hmm. it so games like that always have like peak interest because you know because of games like that so exactly and win. <laughs> for it to be the grand finale of the of this showcase i mean it's it, it has to be something special right it really so, does it really does and that's just must have something different on it so like to stand out so. exactly um but besides that i mean do you have anything else do you want to go back and hit any that we probably skipped or went over i mean there was a lot of games but those are the ones that truly piqued my interest for sure like 100 percent um i don't know if there's any that you want to backtrack to i mean no like you said like it's just so many (laughs) indie games it's really so hard to pick and choose which ones to talk about because they all have their, their beautiful art styles. They seem like they would have a great storyline. Um, I mean, there was another one that was very Dark Soul-esque, which uh, was like a 2D, just a left and right platforming type of game almost. And it was even like a two-player co-op type of game as well. So that was another one uh, that was like very interesting. There was another game that said it was very like um, completely hand-painted video game, Mm -hmm. which was very, um, fuck, what was the game? Uh, It was like Limbo and very Ori and the last whatever. like. They get Ori and the Last Wisp, and uh, so I mean, beautiful art styles and all that stuff. So it's really hard to just pick and choose. We re- we really just hit on the ones that we found interesting that seem like the basic ones that people might want to like, know who weren't a- weren't able yeah. to see the showcase. Mostly, yeah. Like no disrespect to those that we like skipped over. Oh, hundred percent. No. If know. any if anything, I recommend to go back and and watch the showcase yourself. Yeah, um, it was very good. Honestly, they did a great job on it. Yeah, so. no, Noah J four five six, who we spoke about before on YouTube, he completely live streamed it and reacted to every little bit of it, so you could watch it on his channel as well if you can't find it. Um, I mean, it's definitely something I recommend to go back and really watch and listen. Like we said, we would just skim through because it was about an hour and forty minutes long. I want to say. Um, but yeah, I mean, hopefully you guys find this very informative and enjoyable. <laughs> um, Leche, where can people find you? People could always and always continue finding me at Instagram at Leche Minuesa and also at twitch.tv, uh, techno 95, techno freak 95. And you guys could follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and on Twitch at One Alpha Penguin. Follow the podcast at Instagram and Twitter at Take a Sip underscore Pod, and on the YouTube channel at youtubecom slash Take a Sip. Um, I mean, follow all of them, like them, subscribe, send us reviews and likes and dislikes or whatever. Yeah, man, just we need just haters be <laughs> nice be nice be nice <laughs> haters at least <laughs> i'm going through a fragile moment right now i'm very emotional <laughs> and anything will break me down right now this is why i drink during the podcast <laughs> suppress those emotions uh, uh, that's not what good. too real too real sorry all right um, real. take it back <laughs> take it back um,
But for sure, Tito. <laughs> yes. And as always, drink some water, go for a walk, work out a little bit. I've been baking some bread lately. Oh, I, I made Mexican conchas today. They came out <laughs> perfecto. <laughs> want to see that, definitely check out your Instagram. Yes. Page on that then. <laughs> um, but as always, thank you for listening. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. See you.